All right, what is a financial coach anyway? And how is a financial coach different from a financial advisor? Which do you need? And all the things. These are questions that I get all the time. And today we're going to talk about those and help you decide which is the best option for you in this moment. You're listening to the Debt Rebel Podcast, where we discuss the ins and outs of personal finance for families so you can eliminate the burden of debt create financial margins, and learn a new way to interact with your money. I'm your host, Jules the Budget Nerd, and I have been in your shoes. My husband and I have paid off over $107,000 in consumer debt until we finally threw in the towel and decided it was not for us. Throughout our journey, we learned another way to do life without debt, and that is my hope for you. You can learn more about our story and see full show notes on my website at JulesTheBudgetNerd.com. That's J-E-W-L-Z, the Budget Nerd. Dot com. Now let's dive into the episode. What is a financial coach anyway? Is that the same thing as a financial advisor? Well, the quick answer is yes and no. The big difference, I think, is the intent and desired outcomes. So, for example, a financial advisor will give you advice on your investments and your overall financial plan, maybe create an estate plan, those kinds of things. Some financial advisors also offer coaching in addition to their other services. A financial coach like myself focuses on helping you understand your money behaviors, helps you with budgeting, and some other financial goals. Many of my clients are actually referred to me by financial advisors. So a coach, right, with your finances, someone that can understand what you're going through, where you need to go, and how to get there, right? I am a huge fan of watching the Olympics, especially the Summer Olympics. I remember watching gymnastics, track and field events, volleyball, anything as a young as a young person, and I wanted to be on that Olympic stage so badly. However, I wasn't exactly the most gifted athlete. I was gifted with an excess of height, so I'm six feet, two inches tall. My coordination was definitely not there. So some of my high school high school sports teammates can definitely attest to that. Tripping over my own feet, running down the basketball court. That's really fun. But I loved competing in sports. And in high school, I competed. I did a little bit in college. And ultimately, I became a middle school volleyball coach. That was some of the funnest times for me because I had the opportunity to teach the fundamentals of the sport. I would put together a practice plan for them so they could get better at their skills and do drills. And then I put together a game plan based on all the players that were available to play. And we would go out there and we would participate. We'd put a game together and I helped my athletes be the best that they could possibly be when it came game time. Ultimately, I used my skills and knowledge and wisdom that I used as an athlete I helped them succeed on the court. However, because I was not a player on the court, I could not go out there and win the game for them. I could put all of my expertise, I could give that all to them, put together the practice plans. They knew the game plan and they were the ones on the court. They were the ones that were showing up, doing their best. I was on the sidelines encouraging them all along and giving them pointers and tips on how to improve for the next point and get the next point. But ultimately, I was on the sidelines and they were the ones in the, in the game. Just like all these Olympic athletes that we're watching right now, it's much easier for them to succeed. And I'm not saying and competing in the Olympics is easy. I'm saying that it is easier to succeed when you have someone on the outside looking in and that can help you see the things that are going great and maybe some areas for improvement. Sometimes it's hard for us to see the things because we're so in in our own minds and we're in the day to day that we don't necessarily see the things that we that need some adjustments. So coaches are really great for making those suggested adjustments to the game plan so that they have the the athlete has the best outcome for success, right? The coach can't want it more for the athlete. That athlete has to be hungry for the win. And being hungry for the win with your money is also important. Unlocking the potential in yourself to see your situation differently and make a change. I know it can feel scary and difficult, and that's exactly how I felt in the beginning too. When my husband and I were faced with the dilemma of how to spend the last few dollars we had in our hands to either put food in our belly or a roof over our head, we knew we were at rock bottom. 
And that's where we decided that we needed to make a change. We decided that carrying around the debt that we had like a badge of honor was exhausting, humiliating, and not worth it. We made a plan, worked the plan, got out from underneath a lifestyle that was only tearing us apart. And the pain of changing was less than the pain of remaining in our mess. We wanted to win with money. One thing that I would change about our story looking back is I wish we had hired a coach. I wish that we had someone outside of us knowing the plan that we were on and knowing the things that we were doing that could say, hey, what about this? Have you thought about it this way? Maybe there's some other choices that you can make. You're doing amazing and I want to celebrate that with you. You might be thinking to yourself, if we couldn't afford to make our mortgage payment and buy groceries in the same pay period, how in the world could we possibly afford to hire a coach? And you're right. That's what I get to do now. It is my business. And it's also why I'm so passionate about helping my clients and be that person for them that I needed when we were deep in debt. I have a ton of ways that I learned in the midst of our own mess to free up some cash, create some margin. And that's what I love sharing with my clients is that you can have a life that you absolutely love without going into debt. Sure, we had a few friends that supported us and our family supported us, but we really had each other to lean on. Our debt-free journey would have been a lot shorter if we had someone to go to when we wanted to give up, when we would slip up, because we did, more than I'd like to admit, and because, but Also, someone who would celebrate how big of a deal it was that we paid off a credit card or paid off a student loan or had money in our hands after we left the grocery store and we didn't spend it all. Those are big deals. Or maybe we stuck to the list or maybe we really wanted to buy something and we decided we could wait and save up for it instead of putting it on a credit card. Those are the kinds of things that I love celebrating with my clients. I love celebrating the fact that they called their insurance company and did their annual review, or maybe called their internet company and asked for a lower rate on their internet. These are big, big wins, and the world's not going to celebrate those with you, but I will. I want to celebrate those with you. While I'm also grateful that I had my husband by my side, having a coach to share our thoughts, ideas, and challenges with would have allowed us to get to our debt-free celebration quicker than the six years it took us. That is why I became a financial coach. My own challenges, my own struggles. There are lots of life coaches, fitness coaches, and financial coaches in this world, all types of coaches, and they each have their own story. But when you've been in your client's shoes and there is a different level of understanding and compassion that cannot be taught or studied in any training or course, it's real life. And I want to come alongside you and your family and show you that there is another way to live life without using credit and going into debt and excuse the pun, but it's richer than you could ever imagine. And that's what the Debt Rebel podcast is all about. I'll keep sharing my story if it keeps one marriage from divorce, if it keeps one family from losing quality time together, and all the other, other horrible ways that debt just steals, kills, and destroys your family. I want to get to the bottom of your financial mess with you and make a new way for your family. I'm Jules the Budget Nerd and I am here for you. If you're looking for someone to advise you on your retirement and other investments, a financial advisor is definitely your next call. And I know some really great ones. But if you walk into their office with a large amount of debt, I guarantee they will tell you it's a problem. It's going to hold you back from making the progress that you want to make with your investments. So let's get you set up for success, knock out that debt, so that when you go talk to your financial advisor, you can make some serious progress on your retirement, that dream vacation, your next home, literally whatever you want. You just have to decide which is more painful. The pain of changing or the pain of staying where you are. One thing I know is how you get into debt. And I know you do too. If you eliminate your debt and decide that it's not that great and you want to go back, you know the way. But if you want to take that first step towards your financial independence, let's do this. Let's be debt free together. You can find me on my website at JulesTheBudgetNerd.com. That's J E W L Z, the Budget Nerd.com. You can take a free five-day challenge. You can sign up for my next webinar there. You can also schedule a one-on-one call with me. 
All of those things are free. The ball is in your court and I'm ready to receive it if you're ready to take a chance on yourself. Now that's what I have for you today. I hope that you have a better understanding of the difference between a financial coach and a financial advisor. And I just hope that whatever your next step is, is one that's going to bring you the freedom that you deserve in your finances. And I always like to sign off the show this way. Remember that every step that you do take towards financial independence is a rebellion against debt. So stay strong, keep pushing forward, and fight the good fight. Until next time, Debt Rebels, stay resilient.